Welcome back. This is Mike from Digital Offensive. Um, and in this tutorial, we're going to continue our path uh, onto the OCP with uh, part three of BrainPan. In parts one, we basically identified the buffer overflow. In part two, we developed our buffer overflow code with our shell code to gain a uh, local shell in the box. And now in part three, we're going to explore how to take that user and gain root access. Uh, first off, I want to apologize for no videos lately. Uh, the last few days we had family in town, so we've been extremely busy. And this is the first moment I'm getting to sit down in front of my computer again. Uh, now that works over for the day and actually record another video. So what you have up here on front of my screen here, interpreter uh, um, handler listening. So it's listening on 8080. Remember in our last video, I talked about using common ports in your development of your shell code so you can make sure that you can get out through any type of firewalls and what we're going to do here is we're going to jump right ahead we have our buffer over, uh, overflow code that we wrote already in our last um, tutorial and all we're really going to do here is we're going to execute our code here um scale i believe this is what we called in the last video yep so we have our code that pops up we have a session listening you can see we're able to overflow the application. If you're interested in learning how we created the buffer overflow, check out video um, three, part two of BrainPan, and it will show you how we go through the whole process of identifying uh, the vulnerability, finding the jumps, and creating the shell code. Uh, as I talked in the last video, we talked about creating um, a more user-rich shell. Now that we're on here, um, just to identify that we are definitely on the box. You can see that my user ID is Puck. But if we go like this, since this is a Python shell, we'll get a little bit more similar shell, something that you're used to seeing. <coughs> All right. Um, so in previous tutorials, we talked about how to look at gaining uh, local um, root access through kernel exploits. So we're going to do some basic enumeration, see what we can find, see if we can gain root access simply. One of the things you have to remember with a lot of the kernel exploits is you got to find, make sure that you're able to compile code, that there is an exploit for that kernel, things like that. So one thing we can look at here too is let's do locate GCC. GCC is a common compiler. Um, actually, it may actually just be simple to just do which GCC. So it doesn't look like GCC is actually installed. So GCC is a local compiler for like C code. Um, if GCC is not there, sometimes we could do which CC. That doesn't look like it's installed either. So knowing that, there's a good chance we're not going to be able to compile a code because we don't have the programs to compile it and we're not root to compile. So that kind of is going to limit some of our ability to run some of the exploits that we may find. We go, we could always look at downloading an exploit, compiling on another machine similar to this machine or doing like a static build on another machine and transferring over and then basically doing that way. Let's see what type of kernel it's running. So it looks like it's uh, Ubuntu um, 3.5. So we can see if there's any local exploits for that, but as I said, without having that compiler, we would need to basically install a similar version of Ubuntu to compile that exploit and transfer over to this machine to compile it. So, but let's just check just in case, right? So let's run over our browser. Yep, I'm probably going to actually download the Linux Proof Checker like we've done in the past. But let's come over here. So Linux, uh, Linux kernel 3.5 exploits. Um, Looks like it's Ubuntu 12.0.4 to you. Oh, all right. So let's click on here and see what we got available to us. Uh, Netman, as I said, we don't have access to GCC. So we're not going to be able to install it. I could download a copy of Ubuntu 12.0.4, uh, spin it up in the VM, download this code and compile it. Well, let's see if there's another way to do it. Um, if there's not, that that's a possibility, right? So Linux proof checker. So in our Stapler video we did, we used Linux proof checker, and basically that is a Python script. So let's see if we have Python installed. 
All right, so we do have Python. So let me grab this link and we will download. Um, all right, so I've downloaded uh, the Linux proof checker.py and uh, linenum.sh, two enumeration scripts. It's gonna run through a lot of the basic enumerations of a Linux box. Uh, you can find them easily online um, and be able to download them. I strongly suggest saving these links. Uh, I'll put the link down in the description. So when you get to your OSCP, you have all these enumeration tools. You can quickly download and put uh, uh, in a file. One thing I found very helpful during my path to OSCP is, or during my OSCP, is I kept all my enumeration scripts, all my exploits that I knew that worked out on my um, uh, web share. So basically, I had a web server running on my local machine. So anytime I need to exploit something, I can do a wget, a curl, uh, a reverse shell, a netcat, whatever I need to do is pull those files off my web server to the local machine. They're all stored in the same local space. Um, I created a, a structure for Linux and created a structure for Windows. So I had the tools in the proper directories, making it simpler <clears throat> to find my files, download my files, uh, one thing I did notice, I didn't really have any problems downloading files uh, that I had to get really crafty. Uh, there might have been some other boxes we ha didn't hit yet that I needed to get really uh, crazy and crafty on how to download things. Most of them that we get worked, curl worked, FTP worked, um, being able to netcat a, a file and recompiling it, all those things worked pretty easily. So now that we have these files downloaded, <laughs> let's see. Um, there's two other things that we noticed in this folder, right? And we already uh, checked these out in our last video, in the, the second part of this video. The check serve that SH, and basically what that's doing is making sure that the brain pan executable is running and keeping it running for us. So if we crash it, it uh, restarts the service and keeps the service going. In the web directory, it's just that web page that we saw. So it has that image of the uh, Veracode. It has the bin directory where we download the brain dump that exe from. So nothing too interesting in there. Um, let's see here. So let's run the Linux proof checker first. So we're going to do Python Linux priv. We'll give this a second to run, right? It's going to pop out a lot of information as. And what I'll do here, make it a little bit easier to see and maybe to follow. Let's go full screen. All right, we're in full screen mode here. All right, so down here we have all our possible escalation exploits. We know most of these are not going to work because they're all C language. We don't have a compiler available to us. One thing I find interesting is we have some related shell escape sequences. So it looks like in VI, we can use um, bang bash to escape the uh, application get shell. Uh, looks like awk, find, and Perl also uh, vulnerable to that attack. If we find a process or we're able to run VI, or if VI is running as root, we can escape it too. We can basically escape it as root. Or awk, or find, or Perl. If any of these were running as root, we'd be able to um, escape that sequence and get that level of access. Right now, if we just escape it ourselves, we would have the same access we have now, right? Just to make sure that we looked at everything possible in that script. So as I said, this is an area of interest, but we've got to find a shell that's running that to make use of it. We see netcats installed. That's pretty interesting. All applications are installed. Possibility of trying to find an exploit for one of these. We're going to skip over that. Let's actually jump right up to the top of this file. Okay. So we're able to pull the information about the machine, the kernel version, which we already did with the uname. We have our interface information. We're aware of. We have our open ports, which we we're kind of aware of already. Now you can see our shell that's connected. Some mount points we can look at. Scheduled crons. So sudoers is privileged. It's telling me so we use this found as root. So I couldn't get anything from sudoers because I don't have access. It looks like there's some other users on this machine. Raynard and Anna C and Puck, which I'm running as Puck currently. 
that's good to know. We can take a look at those other users, maybe. Here we have some sewage files. All right. And then we're back to the applications. All right. So a couple of interesting things we can look at here. But let's take a look at the other enumeration script. Because right now, nothing's jumping out at me as, hey, that's definitely the path you want to take. Or that's at least what you should at least try. So as you can see, this is a linear enum similar to the, the uh, Python. We see a lot, we're going to see a lot of same stuff in here. But there's some areas that I've noticed inside this script that's a little bit better. I'm going to point them out to you in a moment. I do like how it breaks out information a lot more. Makes it a little bit easier to read, a little bit easier to follow. I feel it doesn't take over your screen as much as the other script. So let's, let's get to the top of this. All right. So we're at the top here. Start going through. So we, of course, we have all kernel information in our release version, similar to the last one. We have our users broken out, right? Uh, these are users that have previously logged into onto the system, so we know who they are. Now down here, the group memberships. This is where I find it a little bit more interesting because we have a lot more information about some of these users listed here. So it looks like Reynard is parsed to do, possibly. We get some other information about these other users, all right. Seems we met some admin users as well. See how it points that out to Reynard. And I believe that's picking him up because he has to do. Uh, sample entries from the Etsy password file for these users, right? So we know there's a root account. Here's an interesting piece that the other script did not have. We can sudo without supplying a password. Because we have a shell access on this, on Puck, we, we don't know Puck's password. We can change Puck's, uh, we can try to change Puck's password, most likely Sam prompt us for the original password. But, but, but for the fact that we don't need a password or sudo, I think that is gonna be a key. And he's able to run the following command without password, slash home, Anna C slash bin Anna C util. Let's see what happens when Puck runs that. All right, we're gonna scroll down here. I'm gonna paste in the command. Interesting, so it says uh, permission to die. All right, so I gotta do sudo, of course, because that's part of it, paste. All right, usage is that command, and it looks like one of these actions. So dash, oh wait, that's not dash, that's not flag, that's a command. So it wouldn't be dash network, it would just be network. So sudo space case network. Okay, so it looks like it executes the network command, comes back to me, gives me information about our network connections. All right, <clears throat> so what happens if I run proc list? Okay, so not getting anything back on that one. All right, the last one is manual. All right, so it looks like for manual, it's actually going to launch a man page. So knowing that we're running this as sudo, and we can launch the manual, let's try using vi, because we know there's an escape sequence in vi, and see if it works. Um, because we know it's launching that as vi, so if we type in the manual, maybe that'll work. No manual entry, entry from manual. Terminal is not fully functional. Press return. So what if we put a escape sequence in? So we were able to use escape sequence to actually get root access there. So if we go to cd slash root, uh, home root, root, root. Okay, so we were able to get root access through the escape sequence. Um, it's very interesting. I remember reading about this a lot within the OSCP. I don't think, I think there was like, there might have been some work using it. I don't fully remember everything we did, but I remember trying to figure out where this can really be used a lot and putting together 
the information I got from the lindynoom.sh script and the Python script, um, I think it finally made sense to me of how those commands are used within escape sequence to be able to exploit it. So that's definitely a, a, something I learned in this video. So that's great. Uh, something I'm going to take note of for future and moving forward our, uh, my progress through this. So that is a wrap for BrainPan. Um, we were able to basically identify the buffer overflow, create a buffer overflow with our shell code, gain the user level access, jump on this box, and then uh, exploit uh, the box to gain root access to the box. If you like these videos, make sure you subscribe, like them down below. More likes to get, the more likely I am to post more videos. Uh, either way, I'm still gonna try to post videos because I wanna document my path. If my path helps others, uh, learn something, um, keep the motivation going to continue through uh, learning, uh, more power to you. Um, I'm glad I can help any way possible. All right. Once again, thanks for watching. Uh, check out my other videos and uh, subscribe to stay updated as new ones post. Have a good day.